Hi everyone, my name is Clyde de Souza and welcome to another video in the video series called Crash Course on Confluence. In this video series, we are taking a look at, uh, at the absolute basic tips on Confluence to some of the more advanced features in Confluence. And the purpose of this whole crash course is to make, get you familiarized with this product and get you really comfortable to use Confluence. Let's get started. Now let's say if I wanted to include the contents of this page in another page um, and I don't want to duplicate the contents. So to do that, what you can do is you can select any other page. So let's say hello world. Let's edit the page. and scroll down and then using our forward slash shortcuts let's use include click on include and now you have the option to include the content from different pages in this case it was the my second page um, click on close um, and then click on publish this as you can see what we'll do is it will include the contents of the second page in this page uh, and so this is really useful if you want to reuse contents so you can write content in Confluence and to be as modular as possible uh, and then in a common page if you want you could include the contents from different areas so this is a nice feature to have should you need uh, should you need it uh, should you have a use case for it next up we'll take a look at embedding Jira information Jira tickets into your Confluence pages. So to do that, what I'll do is I'll hit enter and then I'll do a forward slash Jira. Now this does assume that you have uh, you have signed up for Atlassian's Jira product as well uh, and perhaps we might cover that in another video but let's assume that you already have uh, a Jira project going on. So all you need to do is just search for that key, uh, a particular Jira ticket, a Jira story. Just click on search and your Confluence should be able to find that particular ticket and then you should be able to just insert it uh, and that would insert um, a line uh, with um, information about the Jira ticket. So that's very useful to have and once I update the status of this ticket in Jira that status will automatically be reflected on this page. So you don't have to manually update tickets, update things on both the places. Now if I click on edit, click on search, I can have a few other display options as well. I can either put it in the table um, and if I want I could uh, not have certain information. So let's say um, I cannot have the key for example uh, displayed on, on my page. Uh, and that when Confluence will make those changes accordingly and as you can see you have all the information about a ticket but no key so you don't know what the number was and so now if I publish I can see that um, the ticket will automatically the information from the ticket will automatically appear in my Confluence page now if I do not want a page I have a few options I can click on the three dots and either archive that page uh, and that would sort of soft delete a page. Um, it would not completely delete it. It will just be uh, hidden somewhere. And as you can see here, it says it's in view in archive. So if I click on that, I can see a list of archived pages. Uh, and one of them is Hello World. And I can always click the three dots and either restore it. So it will just go back to where it was. Or I can delete it. Now I can also delete it from those three dots that we just took a look at before uh, and once I delete it, the page will be gone forever. So that's completely gone in the trash um, and it'll just go out of the space uh, and it can only be restored by space admin um, but you know once you delete it, it's pretty much considered gone. Uh, so you click on delete um, and basically the, that page is gone. Next up, we'll take a look at the different apps that are available in Confluence. So if I click on apps uh, and I can click on uh, find new apps, um, I have the option to search for 
different apps that are available and we'll look at a few use cases the first one that we'll take a look at is called glitch um, now of course this is just randomly selected I found this quite interesting um, being a developer um, and so what I'll do is I'll click on this and I will get this app I'll say get it now and in the background confluence will add this app called glitch uh, to my confluence site so I can close this and just monitor the progress of uh, of this uh, operation now I can see that it has already done it so let's give it a go let's try it out now if I go back to spaces and if I click on my second page and just edit the contents of this page and then from here what we'll do is we will try and add our glitch app embed a glitch app to our conference page so to do so I'll type the forward slash and I'll type glitch it'll insert a glitch macro and then from the configuration options that show up I can type the name of the app uh, so in this case it is called um, troubled kindly date and then it seems like everything is automatically saved uh, and no other field is required so let's close this uh, and let's wait for it to let's wait for it to load so after a long time of loading it has finally loaded the the contents of the glitch app and I can see that this is the correct site uh, and so it has embedded the correct glitch app um, into my confluence page so that works uh, next what we'll do is from the list of apps we'll take a look at slack which is a quite a popular integration uh, and you might end up using it so once you click on slack it will show up a pop-up and because I'm already signed into slack uh, uh, it will um, show me the cancel and allow of buttons I'll click on allow because I do want confluence to connect with slack so it would have already connected uh, the confluence would have already got connected to slack I can go on to slack and check the confluence integration as well so you can see that there's an app here called confluence uh, and then that uh, sort of gives me a few other options uh, because now that it is connected so now that I've added slack app to my confluence site what I can do is I can click on the three dots um, I can click on slack notifications and basically connect my um, confluence with uh, a workspace click on allow and now this will basically add a slack subscription so now from here I can choose a channel um, and I can confirm so any updates that I make to this page uh, will notify uh, a particular slack channel in in my slack workspace so for example if I add a comment um, now that I've added a comment uh, it should notify the general channel um, that there has been uh, a, a an update in on that particular page so that's how you would sort of connect both together and then of course you can play around with these connections as you like and as it fits for your purpose now let's take a look at how you might go about adding a new user to your conference space so what you do is you would click on people and you would click on invite a teammate and then what I'll do is I'll click on conference because that is the access that I want to give this person and I want to add the email address now I click on invite teammate uh, and that will invite the person so this person will then get an email saying that uh, somebody has invited um, you to join the team and all they can do is just click on the join button and they will be able to join our conference space now next thing what you would want to do is manage permissions for a space so you might add multiple people but you might give different people different permissions so what you do is you would go into the space then click on space settings then click on permissions tab and then click on the edit permissions button and so now if you search for the person once the person has accepted your invitation to join uh, you should be able to see that click on add and that person will be added to your table 
Now from here it gets added as a default view only user and then you just need to match these matrix uh, and just assign the correct permissions. So if you want this person to be able to add pages you click this box uh, add comments to this box um, and then of course if you want the person to be able to export in this space you click on this box um, and then after all of the changes um, just click on the save all button and that should save all your changes and then you should be able to visualize your changes in this table so depending on your requirements you can it's very granular so you can you know check all the boxes that are that are that you want or don't want and then uh, just click on save all now let's take a look at what we call has restricted pages so while you can manage permissions for your entire confluence space you might want to make some pages private um, and so what you can do is you can click on this lock option here uh, and this will allow you to change the permissions to uh, allow only specific uh, people to view and edit and then you can manually type the groups or the users uh, to so that they can they can edit uh, or have the other required permissions click on add and click on apply so now these pages are restricted and so they follow a different pattern and now only the people that you've given access to uh, will be able to view this particular page so that's restricted pages now let's take a look at exporting pages and the entire space in confluence to export a page you can click on the three dots uh, and then click on the export option and then either word or PDF so let me just select word for now so what it will do is it will process this in the background and give me the link to download a PDF and if I click on it I should be able to see the contents of this uh, of this page uh, now of course uh, you the if you have content on this page you might be able to see it better in this case it did not have much contents so you have export has PDF and export has word now if you need to export the entire space itself you can click on the space settings then click on content tools and then click on export tab this will allow you to export uh, this entire space with using a few options uh, and let's just select PDF for now click on next and we leave it at the defaults we'll maybe include the page numbers and click on export so obviously depending on the number of pages in your space uh, it might take a while but in this case this was pretty quick now if you take a look at the pages it brings up an index page uh, and it prints all of the contents in my confluence uh, space into this PDF uh, so this is absolutely great because now what you can do is you can create an entire documentation in confluence export it as a PDF and you know you can always hand it out to anybody if you do want to hand it out who does not have access to confluence uh, so there's quite a few advantages here uh, you can export as PDF and Word uh, and of course if you're exporting a space you can also export it as HTML so that's uh, very helpful now let's take a look at space settings what can we um, update in the space settings so if I click on the space settings the first option that you might actually want to update uh, is the logo um, the name uh, and the other few uh, uh, content like categories and description now for that we just click on the edit space details uh, and we can always add a more description for example and click on save and then of course for the icon you can click on edit here and either you drop your own image so if it's it's a specific image that your product team is following you can put that in here or you can choose one of the options available here I've edited the space icon and that's and this is just a quick demo on what you can edit how you can edit your space details now if you click on sidebar configuration um, I have two options here overview and blog and if I toggle these off and on I can see that those disappear from here so overview I've usually seen these left on blog um, 
it depends if you're actually using a blog you might as well turn it on otherwise uh, there's no real value to keeping it on there now if you do want to sort of hide the entire space so nobody else can use it uh, you can archive the space um, and so you don't need it for now archive it or um, what you can do is you can click on the delete space option here and then absolutely delete the entire space so if I click on this red button it will delete the entire space it's immediate and permanent and we won't be able to recover it so you have the option of archiving but let's go ahead and delete it and then the space will no longer exist thanks for watching this video this was the last part of this entire series entire series called crash course on confluence so i hope you really liked this video the like the contents of crash course on confluence uh, and uh, if you do please like share and subscribe and of course in the comments down below also let me know what you thought about this crash course what you thought about confluence and any other feedback in general uh, if you think you might have missed out any of the videos in this crash course, please check out the playlist called Crash Course on Confluence on my YouTube channel. I've put all of them there together so that it's really easy to find them in the order they came out in. Thanks for watching this entire video series. Uh, do, do stay tuned for more videos to come on my channel. Thank you so much. See you next time.